What's up, guys? Sean Black at FM Evolution, and welcome back to another live edition of FM Evolution, sponsored by Pro FM. I am your host, Sean Black, of course, and uh, today we're going to be joined by our co-host, Randy Olson from Pro FMI. Randy, good morning, sir. How are you? Hey, good morning, Sean. Great to see you again. Can't believe we're in month six of our of our little series here. It's uh, but excited for this one. It's gone so fast. It's been incredible. We've had so many great guests on, and today is no exception to that. Today we have Eileen McMorrow from McMorrow Reports. Eileen, good morning. Good morning, guys. How are you today? I'm so good. I'm excited to have you on. Thank we you. We have some great information to cover today from you guys. We do. And uh, but first, we always kind of we have a kind of a tradition on my show where we we talk about. Uh, uh, you know, leaders are readers for us. And I always like to ask people what they're reading. And this is a great way for us to kind of get started. Sure. Well, I, um, I'll reading? tell you, my brand, uh, the McMahon Reports, focuses on uh, facilities management developments. And we're really website newsletters uh, for the industry. And we recently acquired um, one of the leading other uh, facility management websites called FM Link. So um, I've been expanding the business for years now and uh, didn't go to business school. So I'm reading The Road Less Stupid. And this is a great <laughs> book by I... Cunningham. And this tells people who really never thought they'd be in business how to run small business to make it grow and how not to make the many stupid mistakes that Keith Cunningham and his colleagues have made. And um, there are just things you just don't know if you never manage business units. So I, I, this is the one I'm reading and she is not a business book reader. So this is a real challenge for me. And then the other one I'm reading is scaling up. So the idea is that I've decided this is the year that I have to um, stop reading about politics and stop reading about coronavirus and epidemiology. Very interesting, but not growing my business. So I'm reading those and um, I'm trying to do what he says, take an hour a day for thinking time. That is very hard to do, but that's what I'm trying to do. Exceptionally hard to do. Very, very important. Yes. Super important. It's a great advice. Um, good book. Good choice. Yes. Rainy? Well, I, it's actually not as bad to read a business book. as. <laughs> no, it is. It's really good. You really have to decide it's important. And I have. You've got to read what you're into, and where you want to yeah. grow. Right. And so, I mean, obviously reading, you know, is good for entertainment value as well, but if you can do both, that's awesome. Try. Randy, what are you reading, buddy? Yeah. So um, when we talked last month, I was in the middle of a book called Relentless by Tim Grover. And for folks that don't know Tim Grover, um, he was a personal trainer for Michael Jordan and mm -hmm. um, really took Michael Jordan from being a really good basketball player to being a very um, well-rounded and physical basketball player. And there's one great lesson out of this book that I think really pertains to the conversation today. Um, he talks in the book about, um, you know, Michael Jordan, best of the best, right? Best basketball player that ever lived. Yeah. But Michael Jordan wanted training because the best of the best want to get better. And I think that really relates to the conversation we're going to have today around uh, the survey we did for facility management training and, you know, the focus of both employers and employees related to that. So I'm going to wrap that one up. Um, the next book on my plate is uh, the University of Minnesota football coach is a gentleman named PJ Fleck, and he's got an infectious personality and has built a, um, you know, really an interesting culture here at the University of Minnesota football program. Um, around giving back and servant leadership and you know, really a positive, optimistic outlook and culture. Um, so he wrote a book with John Gordon recently called Row the Boat. So PJ Flex mantra is row the boat. So you keep rowing, no matter what happens, you keep, uh, you keep the oars in the water and you keep moving yourself forward. So that's next on the list. Uh, they're both really good. You know, outside of what I do here at Pro FM, I'm also a basketball coach and I, I seek to learn and learn from great leaders all the time. So, um, you know, I'll report back on that one next month. Yeah. How about that? Nice choice, you guys. All right, well, let's hop into this. And but I want to check with Eileen because I want to, uh, to let our audience know who she is. Eileen, for those who don't know 
who you are or uh, about your company. Can you please tell us about you? Sure. Uh, the McMorrow Reports is a digital resource for the facility management industry. But our readers, not only facility managers, but engineering professionals, architects, interior designers, and specifiers at all levels. And we um, tend to put our groups in silos because if you're a corporate facility manager, highly unlikely you're ever gonna become a healthcare facility manager. Highly unlikely you're gonna make a switch to higher education or run a university facility. So we try to break down the news to, uh, and the services we report on in such a way that you read about your segment. You're going to write into your silo. We tell you what's going on in your space, what conferences are best for you. It's news, information, um, conferences that we just love our industry conferences. We've all missed them so much in the past year and a half. But we've done a really good job of bringing the virtual message to people. And I'm really pleased by the number of um, facilities professionals who did get engaged virtually and the wonderful social hours I got to attend in the evening with the industry. So we found that we could connect digitally. So we, we publish a newsletter every Monday morning, um, whether it's corporate healthcare, higher education, government. Uh, and then we do conference newsletters a couple of times a year to let people know where you can get training and tips and networking and be with your colleagues. And we have the other brand, fmlink.com, which I think a lot of people know. It's been around for, my brand's been around 15 years. FMLink's been around 25 years. And um, it was founded by Peter Kimmel and uh, we acquired it and he's consulting uh, to both brands now and continuing his legacy of service uh, to facility management journalism. But we're very proud to add those 16,000 people. And um, we'll talk more later about how people can get to our newsletters. Awesome. Thank that you. It's so cool. It sounds like some great resources for people to check out a little bit later. Uh, I'm excited to get into that. But yep. we are here today because we're going to be talking about the 2021 survey that you guys performed. And I want to hear more about this uh, because it seems like it's a huge undergoing, a huge project to take over and get done. And so Eileen, I would love to kind of get from you, tell us a little bit about uh, the survey and, and, and so people can understand the amount of effort it takes and what you guys do. Yeah, I, I am really a um, kind of an editorial advisory resource to, um, the pro facility management folks. And the idea is that they know my readers are the kind of people who need to get facility management training. And they really wanted to benchmark where the industry was and not just using McMara reports and the FM link audience, but their relationship with uh, APAFOM, NFMT, FM Prime, and then going to AFE, the Associ Association of Facilities Engineering. So we felt we had the core group and we needed to find out what they thought about training. And part of it is getting the questions right. And I really have to say, I think they got the questions right and they wrote them well enough in advance. We could really batter on what you wanted to ask in 2021 compared to 2019 and how things had changed. So it is a large undertaking, but with the right resources and the right potential audience um, to ask those questions to, I think it, it's all about the, the runway you take to doing the survey. Uh, but I would, challenge, I would encourage people who are listening to this answer surveys in your industry. It is so critically important. If you do not tell us what's going on, those of us on the journalism side and the conference side kind of guess, what do you think is most important now? But until you answer a survey for 10 minutes and tell us, so helpful. So. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, we don't know until we ask. And and, and, mm -hmm. and I, I think it's really interesting something you said is asking the right questions. I think is extraordinarily important. And, to getting what you really want to get to. Mm -hmm. um, I, I know there's a lot about demographics in this survey and Randy, I really wanted to help dig into that. And I was hoping you could kind of go over some of the demographics. Yeah, absolutely, Sean. And, and, I, and I think Eileen makes a great point. If, um, if we really want to understand, we got to ask, right? We got to go out to the industry and ask them um, what they need. And, and that's, you know, it's been threaded through the entire life cycle of our program here. So when we built the program, we went out and asked a broad audience, you know, what are, what are the skills, knowledge, abilities that you do on a daily basis to accomplish what you do? So um, we think it's critical to the industry to do this every couple of years and to, and to really understand where the industry is at. Um, from a respondent standpoint this year, um, it's really interesting um, the feedback we got in, in the demographics of the folks we got. So it's really spread across the career continuum. 
of you know less than two years, folks that are two to five, the bulk of the respondents were in that six to 10 and 11 to 15 um, range of, res of respondents. So in, in terms of years of, of service within the FM industry. Um, so 80% of the respondents manage staff, so one or more, and about 20% um, are, you know, don't manage staff at all, spread across 23 unique countries. So we always want to take a global view in, into the industry and understand best practices around the globe. Um, it was almost 50-50 within the U.S. and outside the U.S. So it was actually exactly 51% in the U.S., 49% outside the U.S., in terms of countries responding, the U.S. was number one, but um, Nigeria, Ghana, Egypt, Canada, Botswana, Panama, and the UAE were represented. So those are the top eight countries that were re represented um, mm -hmm. in folks that responded to our survey. And then uh, in terms of building types, really spread very evenly across industries of commercial buildings, government buildings, healthcare, K through 12 schools, second uh, higher ed or uh, you know post-secondary schools hospitality retail yeah. and uh, industrial so industrial manufacturing and then in terms of team size <clears throat> you know the bulk was really in the middle of that uh, kind of team size so we we asked a bunch of you know kind of different um, team sizes along the way but that 10 to 24 or 25 to 49 kind of represented the largest um, uh, size of, of FM team sizes. So we really feel like we've gotten a really nice um, kind of cross section of folks across the career continuum from different industries. Um, and, you know, folks that manage small teams and folks that manage larger teams. So we feel really good about uh, folks that responded. And, uh, you know, I think uh, Eileen, uh, you know, your advice of when you get one of these, you know, do it, answer, answer it so we can better um, you know, provide offerings and uh, bring more value back to the industry. Mm -hmm. yes. Awesome, man. There's a ton of data in this thing. I had there is. really no idea how much <laughs> there's, you have got going on here. I, I want to see if we can dig in a little bit um, and maybe you guys can expand a little bit on the career levels in the survey. Like what, what are you finding out there? Is it, are a lot of people in the, in the, in the older generation getting out of FM? Is it a lot of new FM? uh people coming in and what are you seeing yeah and and eileen i'll you know you and i had a conversation about this last thursday right yeah. so um you know it's interesting i think the the pandemic has accelerated folks path to retirement so um i think if you've been around fm for a while you understand that you know it is an aging workforce and we we need to find those younger individuals to get into these into these jobs and get into these great careers and, and move it forward. And this pandemic has has um, kind of sped that up. So it's accelerated the process. Um, so, you know, important that we expose um, folks that are younger in their career yeah. to the things they need to accomplish. Um, so I'll turn over to Eileen to comment further on that. Yeah, I think we have um seeing the older generation actually really work very hard to bring new people into this field. I am really impressed by the number of people who volunteer their time now to coach and mentor young facilities managers to get more high school students and college students to understand what FM is and to bring them along. They really love their profession as facility managers uh, and they really do want to retire before they're 75. So they're thinking, we, if I don't get people in this building, we don't get people doing this. I, it, it's the passion and the commitment of walking away from building a company, a project, without being able to say, I've got a great person here. We've got, we put together a team. So there's a great demand for engineers, but there's a great demand for junior business managers who have had training at the college level on the various disciplines that facilities management is. And whenever I look through the, um, the pro FM, FMI, the training books, it's just, there's so much they need to know. And there's so much you need to know from strategic planning and capital planning. And then you've got to have your communication skills and emergency management. There's just so much to know. So um, yeah, I, I, am, I am glad to see a lot of young people joined our calls uh, over the past year. So it's encouraging. The body of knowledge that someone who has this tribal knowledge, this this experience that they've been doing this for 30 years mm -hmm. is so mind boggling. 
and, and someone coming into this, uh, I, I think they can be slightly overwhelmed because <laughs> there's just so much you have to learn. And experience is one of the best teachers out there. So I love the fact that people are, are pairing up and mentoring young people coming in because it's yeah. the quickest way to be able to do this. You're going to be able to transfer 30 years worth of experience in a short time to someone coming in new by mentoring them. Mm-hmm. But man, if you don't have that, it, it's tough. Now, Pro FMI gives you a, a huge amount of information and right. the education to be able to do this. But I think you're right. The mentoring is a big deal. It really is. Mm-hmm. makes all the difference in the world. It really does. Well, Randy, what kind of um, what kind of companies were a part of this survey? I mean, there's such a vast amount of demographics, and you know, including the United States and abroad. What do you kind of what do you see in here? So, tell me a little bit more. Yeah, so you know, you know, kind of digging into what type of facilities they manage. Um, you know, at, at the top of the list was commercial facilities, but on down through you know, government and healthcare and uh, you know, secondary schools, post-secondary schools, hospitality, retail, and industrial. And, and I think you, you've made, you made a lot of good points about mentoring. And, you know, when you, when you think about a facility management problem, um, <clears throat> it's a very integrated problem in nature, typically, right? So, you know, there's, there's things here that are pointed out from the most important skills needed, like uh, capital planning, compliance and standards, risk management, emergency planning, um, things that have been exasperated by the pandemic. But, you know, Eileen touched on this as well. Communication is very critical. So how, do, how I communicate what I'm going to do across my own team and across the people that I serve is very critical. The organizations that weathered this, I think, really well, uh, communicated very well throughout it from the top down and from the, from the facilities group. How are we going to um, you know, evolve our workplace to a remote work and a, a hybrid environment, then how are we going to get people back? And how is that safe? What are we doing to our, to our ventilation systems to ensure that we've got proper ventilation? What are we doing to our cleaning? What's the cleaning standard around our organization? So, you know, being able to communicate that effectively is so critical for the facility manager. That, the, the leadership skills needed now for FMs is is so critical that we've talked about you know over the past couple of months, yeah. Sean. In addition, yeah. Alina, I'll, I'll let you weigh in on that as well. Yeah, when you look at um, the subject of capital planning, uh, you know it was something that that a lot of facility managers were told what capital planning would be. They were told that departments were expanding, units were growing, and they needed to open up in another city, and they needed to um, you know make room, or they were contracting and just go you know reduce that space, and we'll you know, move those people to other building. And what's changed is that the, now it's the facility managers who must be knowledgeable about capital planning and investment strategy. They really have to ensure the supply and demand is in the right balance for the organizational strategy. And often um, the folks in the real estate and business units didn't communicate that message until far too late and how st- space would be changing. And now space changed like that 15 months ago and the demand for it. And as business unit managers have watched how cost effective it has been to keep a lot of people working from home, this really means facility managers are put in a a challenging but also awkward position. As the FM, am I telling you how much space you can or cannot have? Or are you telling me how you wanna run your business operation? So it's never been more critical for facility manager to articulate true, true comprehension of capital planning because they need to go back to the, the, the senior people they're reporting to, to be able to s- expand and say, you know, that we're going to gather all your input for the facilities plan, but what you think you want in terms of people coming back may not be the reality of what's going to happen. So that's, I can't think of anything more uh, timely than understanding capital planning needs. And then what well, I would follow up to that about compliance and standards, and that's another another big part that's essential to uh, the organizations and operations. If you can't really um, explain the expectations for the organization's behavior and employee behavior and how they're going to engage and what the broader goals are, then it's not going to be that successful. Um, ultimately, you have to understand the risk management issues, and there are issues related to how long people 
should work remotely. And I'm sure a lot of teams are struggling now with disconnection. So you have to be able to create space to bring people back, to create the bonding and the team building and the experience of the company, but totally acknowledge that they're independent and intelligent and can work collectively and can work on their own at home. So when you look at how facilities meet compliance issues, it's very critical. Well, I'm glad you brought that up because that's actually one of the things I want to talk about. I mean, in the skill gap section on the survey, FM managers identify capital planning and compliance standards as their top priority for yeah. training for themselves. And obviously there is there is there is a gap there, right? right. So compliance changes all the time. The yeah. laws of each state are changing. And if you operate across state lines and never mind states, multiple countries, you know, what are you allowed to do? There's regulations for the workplace. There's regulations about whether or not you're in an office building or on a campus, or you're in a factory you know, the manufacturing sector, you know, there's the facilities people who are manufacturing specialists, there's plant people, there's office people, but um, there are penalties, there are lawsuits, there's a lot of things that can go wrong. And you as an FM have to understand the law, the finance, the mechanics, the expectations of your employer. Um, the senior management doesn't quite realize that facilities managers have all these skill sets and have this basic operating knowledge. And it's not until something goes off the rails that they often realize the facilities people know a lot about, about this. But um, I, I imagine that compliance creates a lot of anxiety for facility managers. That is the thing that's keeping them up at night because they have to understand if they're in a regulated industry enough about the regulations, about how they operate. And then they have to understand um, if laws are changing and if there's a trend and who are the stakeholders you report to. So I, I think you are never done receiving education if you're a facilities manager. It's, it's never over. Randy, what's your opinion on him? From a pro FMI perspective, what does it say about training needs in 2021 here? Yeah, I, so, so I think um, there's, there's a, lot of good, a lot of good information there. We could probably do an entire podcast on managing yeah. change. Yeah. Um, you, right. know, and how, you know, how you deal with that. Uh, I think it's really interesting. You, if you dig into the uh, compliance as an example, um, think about your, your, your state Department of Health and how many times that their approach to things has changed as the pandemic has come and gone throughout that. And the facilities folks have to be on top of that and have to manage through that, through that change, you know, mm -hmm. at, at, at every kind of turn of the dial, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, I also think it's interesting when we look at the data received from the survey around skills gap, um, how folks that lead organizations differ a little bit from folks that um, are employed. You know, folks that lead organizations think one of the most important topics to dig into is leadership. Um, they need their entire staff to be leaders around this. So you need everybody in your facility management team to lead and, and be able to communicate through that. And then, you know, Eileen touched on, on asset management and capital planning. How am I going to maximize the value of my assets going forward? What, what am I going to do with this space? How am I going to repurpose that? What you know, yeah. we had a discussion with um, with our friend Manuel Medina from Panama um, yeah. around space right. management a couple months ago, mm -hmm. and you know, think about even in the last couple of months how that's changed, right? And how uh, the FM folks have to adapt to that. So from a the way we've structured our program is that it's a very integrated approach. So when you look at a problem you're typically not just looking at a space management problem. You're also looking at a number of different factors that are gonna be involved in that solution. So um, our program is designed such that it's an integrated approach to um, what we refer to as the 24 things that every FM should know. And in um, digging into one of those topics, there's threads into several other both technical areas and soft skill areas. It's incredible, man. There's so much you learn from the survey. Uh, and it's it seems to me that this is one of the best ways that you guys possibly could dig into what we need to do to help lead our FM industry going forward. Uh, and one of the things that came up, and I'm glad you brought up leadership because that's one of the, the top skills that came up in the survey as uh, people want to invest more time into. They want to learn more leadership. 
I think, I mean, it's, we talk about it all the time here, Randy, it's core to success for any, any manager, any leader to understand leadership skills. But I mean, they also talked about um, strategic planning and emergency management, communication. Um, Alina, I wonder if you could kind of dive into some of these for us. So, you know, the thing about strategic planning is that you, you, you can't do it unless you have the knowledge. And it sometimes makes me a little sad to hear sometimes that people aren't finding out things as well as they could be. So, you know, strategic planning is, is part of the supply and demand issue of knowing what's going on in your company, but also the, the vision, the mission, the values, that's all part of the strategic plan. And that's why we urge um, facilities managers and facilities execs to try to get as close to the business unit decision makers. I mean, if you begin to hear a, rum a rumble or a rumor that something's going on in a very significant division, don't wait for them to ask you, go in and find out if there is a, possi a growth possibility and that you're willing to keep it very confidential or there's a relocation or there's something happening in acquisitions. Um, it's down to the gap between, you know, the, the facility demand is there's a forecast there's a current facility supply and it's going to be analyzed. There's going to be some high level decision making, but someone has to resolve the gap that might result from that. And the solutions the facilities person has to come up with are alternative recommendations. What could be more costly? What, are more, what is available? And they need to be presented to senior management the way real estate people like to hear them and the way financial people like to hear a report. They need to hear about construction and remodeling projects and what the implications are and the time delays could happen. Um, space manager, personnel, building systems, additions, replacements. You need to be using a certain amount of the facility management language, but in a way that resonates with the business unit manager, the real estate person and the, and the financial people. So again, it's about facility managers learning the language of the units they report to and the management teams they report to. And that's the the strategic planning is the, the thing that makes you have to go off and have quiet time. And for facilities people, there isn't much of that if you're in the business day, right? I mean, it's just- It's not, no. You know, they talk <laughs> about putting out fires. I think there's, there's several levels of facility manager, right? There's the people that put out the fire, but then there's people who have to really sit back, close that door and think about all the reports coming in about where the company or the hospital or a higher education facility is going and growing. And after that, I think we talk about um, how often facility managers are suddenly recognized during emergency management. And the pandemic was a perfect example of how facility managers were globally called to keep organizations running. But their training is keeping them running in the building and suddenly everyone's off premises. So it became down to facility management and IT to be able to keep the machine, keep the machine moving forward. So the recognition that facilities managers in many cases were the only people who left home and got into some kind of transportation and went into a building and met with other human beings who were building management capacity people who could have exposed one another to the virus. They had to do something to either keep a building running to a certain degree so that all the IT information was, was being able to transfer, or they just had to keep power up like the hospitals, right? They had to go in and they had to mask up and they had to take the chance, you know, facilities people putting on PPE, that's what they did. And the recognition of they're those people, always when there's an emergency, there's been lots of hurricanes in this country as well, where the facilities people got recognition, but that's one part of their job but they're, how crucial they are to the glue of keeping companies running. It's these emergency things. But now we've had this one long emergency. I really do think management is going to look at the facility management professional very differently when people come back into the office for those meetings. Yeah, I tell you what, there are, I, I can see vacation requests coming in right now. <laughs> I, think, I think when people come back, FM is going to be like, see ya. <laughs> Good luck. We're taking two weeks off, people. Uh, yeah, that, that, that's interesting. That's yeah. Awesome. yeah. <laughs> Different perspective. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's what I love about this podcast is every time we have a, some, a new guest on, I personally learned so much about FM and, the, and uh, it still blows my mind how much um, 
someone who's in facility management uh, needs to know. The amount of knowledge and experience uh, is so crazy. Uh, and, and like you said, it coming into um, this pandemic, it really put that to the test. Yeah. You know, these guys became frontline. They became the, the people that are keeping these buildings running. And you don't just turn off the building with a switch, you know, and keep it empty and keep it dark. It, it, it takes a lot of work. Um, we had um, some of my, uh, my hotel industry clients, they're telling me it takes a million bucks uh, a month just to keep a building empty. And, and, you know, in one of our hotels, and I was blown away. And, and that's on Skeleton Crew. And that's just the FM doing their thing. And it just, it's so crazy. It's so crazy the amount of work that's going to do. We were talking about the 2021 FM Training Outlook Survey. Yeah. And so far, it's been mind-boggling how much information there is. But, uh, you know, we all have a kind of a, a working understanding that, you know, knowing the needs, needs of your team is the best way to kind of grow them and understand the organization. And, and getting this information is obviously extremely powerful. Um, so, Randy, I, I wonder, how did you start this whole survey process? Like, what, how did this happen with you guys? It was our partnership. Eileen, how, how's it, how'd it go? Yeah, so we um, we like to do this, Sean, every couple of years. Um, so last one was 2019. This one is hot off the presses. We just got this done. Right. Uh, got all the data kind of pulled together here at uh, the end of March. And we're, you know, kind of button up, buttoning up all the tools that are going to go out for people to learn more about it. Um, but, you know, to, to do that, you've got to have access to folks that will respond to the survey. So we were able to partner with some of our great industry and strategic partners like McMore Report and FM Link, um, our folks, our friends at Apafam and our friends at AFE um, and our, and our uh, business partners at NFMT. So, you know, in partnership with them, we went out and, um, you know, we had our one of our commission members, Stormy Friday, uh, mm -hmm. who you met, Sean, in, in uh, January, and we talked about human yep. capital, uh, really help us structure the right things to ask and the right questions to ask. So, so Stormy helped us with that. And then we went out to the, went out to the market and just uh, kept bothering them until they answered that survey. So, uh, <laughs> so big, big hats off to our, to our partners for helping us uh, get the response that we needed. Outstanding. Do you think with all this information coming in that FM employers really and individuals recognize the need for facility management training? Is that a growing thing that people are kind of understanding it better? Yeah. And that, that's a that's a great question, Sean. And we, uh, we ask that question. So what do you see value in FM training? Yeah. You know, is there any value in it? And, um, you know, I'll share a couple of stats related to that. So 91% of FM staff so they could use more FM training. Sure. Um, incidentally, that's up 12% from the 2019 survey. 91% uh, of FM managers, so same percentage, yeah. said that there's a gap between the knowledge that their staff has and the knowledge needed to provide excellent service to their constituencies. Um, and then 72% of FM managers um, have had difficulty finding the right job candidate, so the right person to hire with the right skill set to be um, effective and efficient facility managers. So, you know, training can close that gap. So, 79% uh, of those managers say FM training and credentials result in better job performance. There's some industry statistics out there around training that for every dollar invested, the return is anywhere from $5 to $15 for that one training dollar invested. And, um, you know, FM organizations clearly see the, see the value in that. Man, I, that's really high percentages right there. That 91% number is so compelling. I mean, if I, I think they should just blow that up pro FM, like you should just make buttons and say 91%, 91%, like the next conference, they wear pro FM 91%. Here we go. What does that mean? That means that both you and your manager agree that there's a gap in skills and a gap in training and the, the, the need for training to elevate you professionally and how the profession of FM serves that company, you're on the exact same page. How hard would that number be to take to the CFO and go, we both agree there's a problem here and the real estate is worth 
how many millions of dollars and talent and real estate. Every talent and real estate. Now companies have acres and acres and acres of real estate. They're like, no, the talent. Will people come and work in the office or will they work at home? I need to find the right person for the job. They're not asking me what color their desk is, yeah. how much space they have, and if there's a good pantry. No longer the issue. It's the talent pool. So really interesting. Ninety-one percent. You're in the wrong department. <laughs> you need to be yeah. in the marketing department. <laughs> That's actually a really good idea, Randy. That ninety-one percent is just every time I look at that number, I was going, "Oh, we have to work. We got to work on that." It's staggering. It yeah. it really is. I blew me away right now. Uh, yeah, and, and you know, kind of doubling down on that. You know, some of the other things we talked about with the acceleration of folks now leaving the career. Um, right. you, 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 it's a, it, I mean, there's no choice, right? I mean, you've got, you've got to invest in your people now. And, you know, I think folks always get worried about why well, invest in somebody and they're going to leave. Well, what if you don't invest in them? Right. And, and, um, you know, they, they muddle along. So the, the time is now to do this. And, you know, the survey really highlights that, uh, folks see the value in it, see the value in training. Do you guys think, do you guys think it, that it, I mean, clearly it makes an impact, the training and, you know, but is it accessible? Is it easier for people to get FM training now? I think so. And the reason I think that is because um, it's been proven that you don't have to watch the hours people are working. You only have to see the result. So facilities people and everyone's proven there's a lot you can do in the middle of the day. And I think the fact that when you take a program like Pro FM, which can be, you know, training based with one on one, or it can be virtual. You can you can have your FM do this on a Thursday afternoon from one to three p.m. They can take a class and still do their work day. It doesn't have to be that someone's trying to get out of the office a quarter or five because they've got a class at a community college or a local university to work on their facility management degree. That is unbelievably stressful for people who have fallen short on trying to finish up credentialing and additional degrees because they had to try to leave the work to go get more training. Now you just can do it as a seamless flow. You can do it on Saturdays, Sunday evenings. There's so much um, online training that's available midday and in the evenings. There's all these great books that are written, the CD. So you can do it any way you want. And it's, it's, it's just the whole way of getting trained has changed. And people who are committed to doing it or support from their employers, employers will go ahead and get online and do it. It's, it's been proven. So um, it's not accessibility, it's being encouraged. We think you're important enough to get this training. We think you're really good at what you do, but we know you can't possibly know everything. And, and it's okay for FMs to also go to their managers and go, look, this is all the stuff I still don't know. And I've been in this business for 10 years. Can you help me? sometimes just to ask can you help me get this i really want to do this for you i think that's right yeah you have to ask you and i think that takes some humility and uh and and knowing that you don't know everything yeah you no know? so I, that's a big deal you yeah. know with all the changes you, that you brought up you know we're, we're we're working remotely now 2019 has caused such a big shift in the way yeah. that we do things there's that word we're going to shift. Uh, I wanted to kind of ask Randy, obviously there's been a lot of change in the industry, but is there more of a skill gap now than before with everyone working remotely or is it, what, what, do, you, what do you see there? Like are people filling their time with education or are they, are they missing out because they're not, they don't have time with their mentors? Yeah. And, and I think, um, you know, another great question and, you know, we asked the remote work question, you know, it's the evolution of the workplace, right? And, you know, the tools are at a point now where you can support people um, where they are. Mm -hmm. um, but with the FM, it, it kind of cut, it's a knife that cuts two ways, I guess. Is, yeah. that, is that a thing we can say on the podcast here? Yeah, yeah. Um, because you've got, you've got staff yeah. that have to work somewhere. And like Eileen so eloquently talked about earlier in the podcast, in a lot of cases, they had to go in. They had to keep going in during this time while other people, you know, got 
got the chance to be out. So you've got staff you need to manage and how do you manage them remotely? But then how do you provide that value to the individuals um, that are out, now outside the office? So your customers, if you will, your, your constituencies. And you know, it's, it's such an interesting topic. And you know, we had, a, I think it was the, maybe March, Sean, we did a cybersecurity yeah. podcast with uh, Maureen Roskowski and Gordon Mitchell out of Scotland. And, you know, think about how that, um, just that topic alone has changed over the last 15 months, given that folks now have access to corporate systems outside the office. This has been on, this has been top of mind for FMs for a long time, you know, um, through building systems, through in, in retail environments where folks enter a corporate network through a building system attached to one of the retail stores, you know? So there, there's, right. there's so many, there's so many interesting topics. So remote work, um, you know, we asked that question and overwhelmingly they said, yes, we need more help there. That's all in the program. And again, th this, you know, remote work, hybrid working, hot desking, all those things are addressed in the program, but it's not a standalone topic, right? So it's integrated with so many other things to consider as you look to provide more access to systems outside the office. Man. So I, I don't know so much if we could say personally, the skills gap grew for the people. I think the, the, the evolution of workplace, what, what the workplace and workspace is and how people work not just in North America, but all over the world now, that changed so rapidly. There is no facilities wizard who could have caught up with that so fast. But the, the reason we need conferencing is to hear how other corporations are approaching this. Now more than ever, facilities people kind of do need two days out to network back at a conference to hear those experiences. I mean, you can get on these calls and do 40 minutes and an hour and listen to it, but the real sharing, and the cybersecurity issues are paramount now, you know, and it's, it's FM and IT and FM and IT and HR. And it's not only trusting where your colleagues are accessing your network, but can you trust the people in their maybe shared workspace? Not everyone's working from home. People are working from small community, local uh, <laughs> workshops. Like people just put up these places to serve coffee and set up 20 desks, but you don't really know who's next to you. You might be a very friendly person. You just don't know. You don't know who's looking at the screen of your employee because they're not in your office. That, that's, that is a real concern for breach of security and building management. Yeah, yeah. and then Sean, if you, if you take that up a level, you know, it, it, it's so important as folks seek a training program to find a program that's gonna help them establish and build those critical thinking skills, right? So if we take this up at the highest level, um, and I've talked many times about it's not, you know, a standalone topic typically when you're looking to solve a problem, but you've got to critically think through um, what, what the problem is and what the solution to that is. And a lot of that comes with experience, but we've talked about, the, you know, kind of the experience gap here um, throughout the podcast today. So um, we believe we have the program that can help folks do that. So, man, just so much information you guys on the survey. <laughs> to break it down with uh eileen with the top priorities what what is this for fms uh for fm employers and, and, and staff when it comes to facility management training what are the top priorities based on this um again closing that gap that fm they they the senior managers of facility management have been encouraged by the senior leadership above them to get increased training for their staff i mean 49 percent of employers are, are looking for more FM training. They, they, they recognize it and they know there's gonna be budget issues and shortfalls, but they'll figure it out, right? You need this. And then 58% of employers are saying that they, they do provide funding for staff to pursue external FM training credentials qualifications. So 58% is a pretty healthy number, you know, to go forward for that. And if you've got employers who are planning to implement FM training this year, I mean, this year is half over. It's half over. So what we, we look at and say is could be July before things get started, but maybe it's all about building that budget now to let a program really begin to take off in 2022 for facility management as, as a whole module of training for people. You know, look at your whole department 
and see if everyone needs access to training and how to get say it. it this year's over <laughs> well, i don't want to say it's over but it is half over and I'm it so feels over. like it's over I, it I'm so aware of, I feel like a lot of facilities people in september are going to feel like they're just getting started yeah because if there is a real return to professional workplaces and and campuses and and hospital back office people coming physically back into the hospital to do their jobs, which begs another big question is, so why are all these administration taking up healthcare patient real estate? That's another one. Should those jobs be done someplace else versus the physical real estate where people, people can be treated for health issues? But these are things the facility manager can bring up and say, so how is there for this use of our space as a hospital facility? When we can put the admin people in leased space down the block, or home so yeah. all, all these changes that are coming and so wow. many so many things to cover yeah. we have uh, just uh, we have shows for a lifetime <laughs> in fm there's so many things you can cover great but point it is, a, it is a lifetime people enter fm for a lifetime it's a lifetime commitment because it's an exciting career it's always changing and it's so this is the most dynamic time Did, we're going to change the way america works and facility management is going to be at the pinnacle of that decision-making time. Man, exciting. So crazy. You guys, we're, we're almost out of time. Really? We're almost out of time. We're I've, right. got another, I've got another hour. What do you say? <laughs> <laughs> I know. That's what I'm saying. We're, we're going to wrap done. up here in a little bit, but I have a few more things I want to cover. Sure. Uh, Randy, I wanted to ask you, uh, how can an FM learn more about the results on this survey? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so our, our website is always a great source of information. So it's profami.org. And um, out there, you will find currently an executive summary of the survey results. We're um, kind of buttoning up and shining up the, the full white paper that will be available here. Um, gosh, and I hate to put pressure on the, the team that's working on this, but I would expect within a week here. That'll be that'll be fully available. Um, we've shared some drafts out. You know, Eileen's certainly seen that. Sean, you've you've seen the the yeah. draft of that white paper. Um, you know, but we're kind of perfectionists, so we're gonna we're gonna tighten that up a little bit, and we'll make that available um, here. You know, I would think by the end of the week when this podcast drops, I would think that would be ready to go. So, hey, I tell you what, it was good enough for me. It looked good, <laughs> but <laughs> I, I know you guys, you gotta keep working on it. It's, it's all right. It's good. Uh, pretty powerful stuff. I, I saw the, like, the the early edition here, and it's impressive. So people need to download this thing and take a look at it. It's, it's really really cool. Uh, Eileen, as we wrap up here, what do you see was the most important takeaway from the 2021 survey for you? That um, the job isn't done. The facility management is ever evolving, and there are if 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 you are a expert in facility management communication and you know everyone receives your messages that's great but you can't that doesn't mean that you're totally informed for strategic planning and for asset management and for emergency management you know you just there's the compliance the standards it it's ever evolving so don't um don't be passive there's always more to do in, in fm that's the takeaway the survey shows that not everybody can know everything and you could pick an area every couple of months and say, I'm going to get better at this part of FM. I need to know more about what's happening. Awesome. Love it. Randy, what was your takeaway to you? I would love to get your input. Yeah, I think uh, very consistent in that, um, you know, the time is now and it it's um, across both management and staff and FM staff. Um, they need it. You know, they have gaps. They've recognized that they have gaps and they need, uh, they need help. Um, with those gaps. So yeah, I think topic wise, you know, asset management, strategic planning, always leadership, always communication, mm -hmm. um, innovation, you know, continues to, to score very highly in, in these surveys. So um, it, it's, um, it's just great data there. Everybody needs to download the white paper when it's ready. Right. So. All right, well, we will put a link on our podcast for that. So we'll get that from you guys. We'll share it, make sure everyone knows where to get the survey because it is awesome uh and eileen for those who are uh who want to learn more about mcmorrow and, sure. and learn more about you and, and how do they get in touch with you so uh, we're on the web it's mcmorrow my last name reports with an s.com 
and the upper right hand corner has got a subscribe button and you can choose which of the newsletters you'd like to receive or all of them. It's complimentary to the industry because we are supported through advertising and direct email marketing and we've got a great relationship with the vendors that support the industry. Same for FM Link, our new brand. You just go right to fmlink.com and there's uh, newsletters there as well to subscribe to. And we invite people to just you know, keep the website open, keep it bookmarked because we're updating five days a week and letting you know what's happening in the industry. Awesome. Well, that you. sounds great. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. It was so good to have you on. Randy, take us out here. For those who are looking to, to learn more about ProFMI and want to get some training, where do they go, man? Yep. So it's ProFMI.org. That's, that's the place to go. Um, I will also double down on Eileen's comments. You need to subscribe to McMorrow Report and FM Link. You, you, need, you need to get on that list. Um, there's so much value in that um, every week. So I should have said earlier when I in my in my reading, that's the first thing I read on Monday morning is um, <laughs> from the from the McMorrow report. Um, yes. But um, beyond that, you know, Eileen's just a, a phenomenal partner, um, just a great person. And I learn something every week. We do a weekly call and I learn something yeah. from Eileen every week. So there is uh, so much value in what they offer. So please go uh, check out the McMore reports. And then for ProFM, it's ProFMI.org. And you'll find everything you need there. You will. Absolutely. Awesome. You guys. Well, that is it. We're done. We made it through an entire show already. And uh, for all of those who are listening, thank you so much. We couldn't do this without uh, you guys' support. We really appreciate you. Uh, make sure if you're on YouTube right now, Hit the little bell for notifications so you know when you get the new videos come out. Hit subscribe. We'd love for you guys to continue to get great content from uh, amazing people like Eileen and Randy. And uh, for all those listening on your favorite podcast platform, hit subscribe and leave us a comment. We would love to get your questions answered as well uh, from everyone here at FM Evolution, the entire team. Thank you so much. Eileen, thank you so much. And Randy? Yeah, it's great. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sean. Great job. Yeah, absolutely. We'll see you guys next time.